What's up, fam bros? This is your boy DJ Ben Amin, and we are here with, I'm going to butcher their names because that's what I do. <laughs> Hopefully I get it somewhere right because I've been hunting these guys down for a long time now. We are here with Kirin Gillen and Jamie McKelvey. Yeah, Did I, all righty, I got it right. Close enough. <laughs> Trust me, I do it way worse normally. So that's, that's pretty damn good right there. Kieran Gillen, Jamie McKelvey are two of my favorite creators of all time. I can't lie, I've been reading comics for like most of my life. I really got onto y'all when I first found out about um, Young Avengers. And when y'all came on the Young Avengers, I was really, because I loved the first series so much. So then I was like, oh, I hope these guys don't fuck it up. <laughs> and by the end of it, I really can't even remember why I loved the first series. Like, I'm not lying to you. It is just, it, it has taken its place. In fact, on our show, someone asked us a book to recommend to an 11-year-old. And I'm like, 11 might be a little too young, but I still think, yeah, but it's that age. We're at 12, 13, good for it. But something you maybe you wouldn't give it to your kid. It's sort of thing, I think they would like it at 11, but you wouldn't give it to your kid. You know, yeah, I remember yeah, there's yeah. like books I got out of the library when I was 11. I'm like, my, my, if my parents knew I was reading this, they probably wouldn't approve, but I loved it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Young Avengers, also Phonogram, another one. I love the Singles Club. You got the new one going on right now. And also my favorite, well, one of my favorite books, I'm not going to go all the way, but one of my favorite books out, out right there. Yeah, it's up there. It's definitely up there. And it's been getting better to me. And I mean, I, I loved it from the start. It's Wicked and Divine. So, can we talk about Wicked and Divine just for a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. That is certainly something we can do. All right. <laughs> okay, for those who don't know, Wicked and Divine features a pantheon of gods who come back every 90 or so years, and it just has some of the illest ideas, everything. In fact, on the show, I talked about this, and I really want to ask you about it. There's a page in the latest issue where you break down patriarchal society. I have been quoting this page since I read it. I just want to thank you, and just what inspired that? It's interesting because it's like, you know, Woden's a complete monster. Oh you know, that, that's what it's like. <laughs> but that org I was trying to work out what kind of argument, because I wanted to write someone who was completely, you know, pretty evil. And, had, and it, it's almost like he's read all the books and he doesn't care. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I can put this argument, but really I'm in it for myself. As in, even these people who, the idea that, oh, men used to be in this position. No, they weren't. Most men didn't, you know. If the idea of an emperor having like 100,000 concubines, that's not 100,000, 10, 12,000 is about the highest. <laughs> but that means there was a lot of, there's a lot of dudes who didn't have sex with anybody. And that's how, you know, civilizations pretty much all started. And I thought that's an interesting fact. So I remembered that. And I, uh, specifically, it, it was that, plus uh, a book called Laurie, Pe uh, a writer called Laurie Penny, her, her most recent book, I've been forgot what it's called. I blanked oh my god, well. need, really ma maybe need, needful. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, it's like, look, if, if you Google, she's done two books. One's called, uh, I forgot the other one. The one that isn't got meat in the title. Uh, but one of her, her new books is she basically talks about the patriarchy and that. And, you know, you know, the patriarchy hurts everyone, which is something people say a lot. You know, so I picked up these things and threw it all together. And I thought, you know, and it was also me thinking about World War One. I. I was listening to a lot and I, I really have hated to, you know, that kind of, wow, being born a, you know, British dude yeah. at this time. I would almost certainly be dead, yeah. you know, because I, I, can't, I can't fight. I would, I would immediately die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, um, so all those sort of you mash it together. Think here's an, in, you know, and here's an interesting argument. I think it's an interesting argument posed by somebody who is a, a, a bit of a dick. So it's that kind of like, so why is he saying this? What does it mean to him? So I find like, and depends how much do you agree with him? And it's, and it's definitely kind of like because he's very much a bad guy. How much do you agree with this argument? How much do you think he agrees? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of. You can quote it out of context, and it's quite interesting because people who quote it out of context as a feminist thing, whilst Woden definitely isn't. Well, no. he's, he isn't a feminist character. No. So it's this kind of like... <laughs> it's like that, he that, understands, but he doesn't care. That's the, yeah, that's, that's, a, like, that's the thing. The, the fundamental nihilism of uh, Woden is like so much... To, like that, That's the core of the character for me. And I just want to make... A, a, the whole issue is about making a villain I... It was a really hard issue to write. But I'm an, an intellectually coherent villain. You know, as in like, he's he, always thinking, I know, you know, and I know a lot more about him than everyone else does as well. So trying to really dig into why he does things, that's horrible. Because at some level, since all, most of the characters are kind of autobiographical, I'm digging into the very worst parts of me. You know, and that kind of, and you don't want to, you don't want to admit that a dude like Woden is any part of you. See, that's funny because I, I know Roden is evil, but <laughs> but he you know he had a line earlier. I, I don't think it was that issue when um, Laura I think is reacting to him and she's like, "You're not, you're just evil, you know. You're not, you're not stupid. You're just evil." There it yeah, is. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't even think he was that evil. I thought he was one of those people who's probably a little too smart for his own good, you know, and doesn't I, I recognize think, humanity anymore. I think it's one of the things that you know. Well, how Roden is tricky in that way. Evil, you know, him him choosing to put. I think if you, 
what's a useful definition of evil? A useful definition of evil is treating people like things. That's mm -hmm. like Terry Pratchett's definition, mm -hmm. which I think that's actually a pretty good one. Mm -hmm. And Woden has chosen to treat people like things. Yeah. And that, you know, that is that kind of, you have chosen not to think about anyone else's feelings, only your own feelings matter. That's solip there's a word I can never say, solipsistic. <laughs> yeah. uh, Almost got it. I'm yeah. a butcher of names and words. You don't want me to try that one. <laughs> uh, you know, only you exist. So that kind of, if you, at least on one fairly good definition of evil, Woden's evil. And I think Sandra sees that. But that kind of, the, there's an interesting, I think Cassandra's also interested in, not like sexually, but Cassandra's like, you are weird, you are much weirder than I thought out you were. Oh. And, it's like, and I think the channel of the journalist part of it goes, yeah. so I've, got, I've got friends who are like pretty serious critics, they watch like pickup artist forums just to see that people talk to each other and they go, wow, you people are weird. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I kind of think Cassandra might feel woden a bit like that. Anyway. Definitely. Okay, one thing that I have to ask you about, because you've been collaborating so long, and you have such a, like, I guess synergy is the word. How does the, and then also not only that, you are also approaching comics and using panels and just using storytelling in so many different ways. I mean, revolutionary, new ideas, different ways. So how does this collaboration work between you two? A lot of emails? <laughs> yeah, a lot of emails, yeah. I mean, you we, we learned through working together that um, Gmail, you know, the back and forth all gets like grouped together. Oh, sorry, that, 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 <laughs> that breaks at 100. Once you've gone at 100 back and forth, it breaks and starts a new one. Oh, really? And we learned that because of the collaboration together, yeah. because there's so much back and forth. Um, I mean, the, it's not shorthand. Um, Kieran writes very full scripts, but they're, they're conversations. We, we discuss uh, every step along the way. We discuss how, with, with Matt as well, it, it's not just the two of us, it's, it's all of us, uh, how we approach everything that we do together. Um, and there is shorthand, and we do understand each other how we work, but it's a conversation. Yeah. I would so, say. The stuff you'd write, you wouldn't, I wouldn't write for anyone else because it's a level of trust. And trust is probably the wrong word, but knowing that, you know, A, that Jamie would be up for it. If yeah. you write something and artist isn't up for it, it's never going to work because artists only really. What, Art's only, only ever really any good if you give a toss about it. You know, if you care, if you, you can tell if the artist doesn't care. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the way. And it's, you know, a lot of it's only experimental in the context of like relative mainstream comics. There's a lot of stuff, because we're indie people as well. We like mm -hmm. really underground indie work. You know, we're not that experimental, but experimental in the form of a pop song. Like, you know, that's, you know, I like, I love, I, I like really weird ass music, <laughs> but that's not like stuff I play at the dance floor. And the stuff I really love is stuff which is, crosses over, and fills the dance floor with really, really weird noise. You know, and that kind of like, what the hell was this kind of, and somehow people found a way to make it pop music. And but, I remember like R&B, like the, kind of the sci-fi R&B circle, like 98, like 2001, all that stuff was like, wow, this is really weird and it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, it's filling dance floors. And that's kind of what we tried to do with Wicked. Yeah. And wow, that was a very me metaphor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very weird, but it's filling up comic shops. Yeah, no, and I um, absolutely love like your use of music, because I'm a DJ myself. So yeah, it, and, I, and I'm all, I have to admit, Sometimes you stump me and it gets me and I'm like, damn it, you know, when you do. But, you know, also the references like in Young Avengers to be my baby, like that was just so perfect, you know. When he said the drums, I just like, okay, it's got to be, you know. That's, that's, that's my favorite bit of thing is that that was enough to get so many people realize what record it was. There was like, you know? On YouTube, there was like, a, you know, people upload all the songs and there was the be my baby one. Like when that came out, like the, the top 10 comments were people were like, oh, yeah, I found this because of Young Avengers. It's just like... Amazing. That's just like uh, when you said that, um, was it the Grimes uh, found uh, Take On Me? Yes. Because <laughs> yeah, of, yeah, yeah. Or at least rediscovered well, it like, yeah, at yeah. this point in time. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, and wow, that's like. That was, yeah, it hurt me. I was like, really? <laughs> like, but, you know, I, you know, like you said, it's a beautiful thing, the age gap. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but back real quick to the um, art and to how everything collaborates. Like, what made you decide to take such experiments, like in the Young Avengers, uh, like when we, they had the white panel pages? Yeah, yeah. Or even in the latest issue of Weekend Divine, where it's like you reused and resampled old art. Well, I think with Young Avengers, the idea, the, the very idea of it was let's try and do what we would do with any book that we do, um, not just like oh, this is a superhero book, we have to follow certain conventions or whatever. It was like let's treat this as if it's ours and see what we can do with it. Yeah. Um, and we set ourselves the challenge, you know, like every issue, we do the action scene in a way that we have never done before and then we never use that idea again and we do the next one. Um, I don't know, we just like messing yeah, around with things. What, what was Tranko, you know, the idea of what was Tranko do now? Yeah. Uh, that kind of, that, yeah, that, that yeah, the, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, it's such a, you know, if you were, who, I literally forget who I'm ripping off. Curse you out. <laughs> <laughs> People, the, um, Jack, it was like, you know, what would Jack Kirby do? And Jack yeah, Kirby you, would, you, would make something up new. Yeah. yeah. And that's kind of like, that's the attitude we tried to do. And it's like, the idea of doing it, 
so so much like superhero comics, as much as I love them, are, are very backwards looking. Mm. So we Young Avengers, we want to, okay, we want to do a book that feels like 2014, no, 2013. Yeah. yeah. That, you know, that we want to make it as 2013 as you know anything, mm -hmm. uh, and we'll just entirely be of this moment, and that's fine because that's what pop music is about. And occasionally that becomes immortal. You know, you can't control that. Yeah. So that was kind of at least part, you know, do something new. And that's kind of like, you know, Wick Div. That's why we wanted to do Wick Div after Young Avengers, because the idea of going back and doing Phonogram instantly, mm. it's, Phonogram is, you know, it's old work. Yeah. Uh, as much as we loved it and wanted to complete it, we, it was time for something new. Uh, so, you know, and we did it, and it was fun. Most definitely. And I, I mean, I thank you for doing it. I had hoped you would keep going on Young Avengers forever. But it's also, I love it because it's one of those books that, it, you know, it's that short time and it tells, like you said, it's perfect for that year and it just encapsulates it. And like when I recommended it to the kid, I felt it was so great because not only do you have it, this great story about, you know, kids growing up, but you also have the mother alien and what that represents and how it like represents, you know, you, you wanting to go against it. So like, where did all, I mean, what put you on this path for this book? I, don't know, it's weird. Oh, I think it was a lot about... Oh wow, let's get something. About, it's like about to get dark again. <laughs> and I was just, but there was, I was all thinking about like making because it's whilst the mother alien is kind of the, like spoilers for Young Avengers, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's this bit where you know it's not the problem isn't really mother. Mother was created, mm -hmm. and it, the problem is really all, all the Young Avengers have messed up. Yeah, they've all messed up, and they, by the end of the book, they all own their mistakes. So it's not really about evil parents. It's actually about you know teenagers messing up and then trying to own it. Mm -hmm. You know. And that's kind of what, for me, like, I could use the idea of, like, creating this mother as a monster and then realising the more you go through, oh, no, the bad guys are all the Young Avengers. You know, they've created this problem. Loki is clearly the one most responsible, <laughs> but everyone else has at least got a small hand in it. Uh, and that kind of the idea that, you know, um, there's a line they drop. The first step of uh, Prodigy drops it towards the end. It's uh, the first necessary step to saving the world. Uh, it's it stopping yourself. I forget what it was. It um, uh, Basically, you know, you know, if you if you act badly, if you act badly, you're incapable of helping the world. Mm -hmm. So you've got to basically, you know, you've got to respect yourself and basically own your own your own life before you can actually make any real positive change in the world, I guess. Yeah. And that was kind of like, it's weird for a book that's quite experimental as Young Avengers. It's pretty like basic morals. You know, it's kind of just, you know, if you don't, you know, look after your friends. You know, as America puts it, if you don't save each other, we've got Jack. Because then it was all weak occasionally, and we need we need people around us. You know, these kind of very very basic. Mm -hmm like old, old, very old-fashioned models in many ways and we try to do it in a modern way i guess that was the idea oh and you did it very well I one of my favorite quotes from that book of all time i mean if any comic is is love really going to save the world yes yeah. it is whoever doesn't believe he gets stomped in the paste <laughs> that's one of the greatest lies of all time okay i know you got to get out of here so i just want to ask you one more thing can you please stop killing characters i love and wicked in the vine <laughs> so we do a show on the front of every issue these characters will all be dead and it's like it's my favorite people are like act surprised what <laughs> but, but we waited we, you know two years that's what I'm thinking two years uh, but, and, and then and then you're killing the ones who aren't even gods yet and as soon as they become uh, well, spoilers but yeah that wouldn't really hurt that was it was hard honestly it will, I, I, honestly it will all make sense in the end in that kind of like we we do have this like you know the full plan we know how it ends we know how the structure goes yeah. I think when people see how it all hangs together they go oh right now I get it uh, and it's traumatic. It's really hard for us to draw. Uh, and I get beaten up by these guys. So, yeah, You're doing we, what? When we find out who's next dead, like me and Matt typing big capital letters, yelling at him. Yeah. No, <laughs> you couldn't have. Yeah. But honestly, everyone's fine now. No, nothing bad ever happens anymore in the book. Yeah. Right. That's uh, <laughs> highly doubtful folks <laughs> I just don't seem to believe it okay one last thing like I said about the latest issue when you had the patriarchy but you also had this thing where you were sampling yourself like you said online that you'd seen other people doing it yeah. with your art before yeah, yeah. So, Tumblr, like Tumblr, the Tumblr fan, it's basically the fan communities. They take art all from movies or anything, they make gifts, they recolor gifts, they use them in ways they weren't intended to be. That kind of like, uh, that, that's that visual sampling culture. Mm -hmm. And I've, um, I first, we came aware of it much more when we were doing Young Avengers, because, you know, we were very in, involved in that community. And we sort of thought, we should probably, we could do this. And yeah. then I thought, no, let's do an issue like this. And see if it, and of course, Woden being the DJ god, that makes kind of meta, you know, meta sense. Mm. Uh, and we had no idea how we were going to do it. So I, I literally, it was so hard to write. We sat, I sat down and just had all the issues in front of me. And we're like, okay, yeah. what, what on earth, what story could I possibly tell on this mess? Wow. Uh, but yeah. It, it's worth, I say, you said like, why did you do it? This kind of stuff. It's just, it's interesting. Yeah. And like, I, I quite like the idea of you pick up a book and oh, I, I never thought about that before. And I love books that do that to me. And it's just, you know, have an idea, throw it at the page, have another one. You know, um, there's, I, 
the formalism of it, of the medium, really appeals to me. This, so, not in a kind of like, hopefully, ideally, not like an overlong guitar solo to show what you can do, but more like, here's an interesting thing. How, ever thought about this? Ever thought about that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the idea. And hopefully, people mostly seem to like it. And occasionally, people think we're smart answers. <laughs> we are loving it, a fan bros. In fact, I'm going to have to give you, you got to give a shout to Ty the Robot because he is such a fan and he should be so mad when, I, when he finds out that I got this interview without him. So. No, thank you so much. And, you know, everyone out there, check out Wicked and Divine. Pick up Phonogram. Pick up, go back and pick up the hardcover of Young Avengers. It is so worth it. One of the best books Marvel's put out in the last 10 years easily. And thank you very much. We've been looking for this forever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>